What's up my friend, Abby here and welcome back to Writer's Life Wednesdays. Today we are talking about choosing a point of view. This is the question. First person, second person, third person close, third person omniscient. Which one is best? Which one should you choose? Obviously there are pros and cons to all of these, but that's what we're gonna discuss today. We're going to discuss the options and figure out what point of view is best for your story. First, let's talk first person, which is narrative told as I, me, or my. Example, I pick up the phone and say, hello? First person is my favorite point of view and it's what I write in most, just because to me, it feels the most personal and intimate. It just makes you feel like you are actually the character, which is something us writers are always trying to accomplish, right? Not saying you can't do this with other points of view because you certainly can, but we're gonna talk about that in a minute. First first person. I love first person because to me, it feels more immersive. When I'm writing, I feel more one with the character, which allows me to write better voice for that character and better emotions. In fact, if you're really used to writing in first person and you want to write third person close, you can literally just write in first person, then go back and change all the pronouns. But we'll talk about that in a minute. First person, in my opinion, is the most immersive point of view to write in. When I start reading a book told in first person, I immediately feel like I am inside the skin of the character. When I start reading a book that's told in third person close or third person omniscient, I immediately feel like I am kind of separated and distanced from that character, if that makes sense. But there are other options to explore, so let's move on. Second person, narrative told as you and your. Example, you pick up the phone and say, hello. Is second person even worth talking about? Like, does anybody even write in that? Unless you're doing like a choose your own adventure book. Remember those? Those were amazing. I loved those. <laughs> so I've never actually seen a novel written in second person, but I have read and written some flash fiction written in second person, and it's an interesting style to play with. Another thing you can do is sort of mix in second person with your point of view of choice, which creates kind of a conversation between the character and the reader. I would be careful with this because too much conversation with the reader can make the reader feel distant from the character's emotions and internal conflict. But a little bit here and there can add to your character's voice and make the reading experience more fun. However, if you're going to do this, commit. Don't just have like one or two lines in there where the re where the character's talking to the reader. Have that be a pattern that repeats again and again throughout your novel. Third person is more popular than second person, but it's important to remember that there are two different types of third person point of view. Third person close, which is narrative told as she, him, they, them, etc., but it's still told from the perspective of a particular character. And third person omniscient, which is narrative told as she, him, they, them, but from the perspective of an omniscient narrator. So even when you're writing from third person, you're still choosing a point of view. With third person close, you are choosing a point of view of one of your characters. Third person close can be ideal for writing a story that's going to follow a lot of characters. I've found that about three to four first person character perspectives is pretty much the most you can do and switch back and forth between before the reader starts to feel like, so confused, like, okay, who, whose head am I in now? I've forgotten. <laughs> that being said, even in third person close, you are still inside a character's head, whichever character is telling the story at the moment. I would advise staying in one character's head for a little while to really establish who they are and why the reader should care about them. Then if you wanna switch point of views, you can. And since third person includes the names of the characters, you won't have to emphatically tell your reader whose head they're in at the moment. But if you're going to tell a chapter or a scene from one character's point of view, don't jump over to the other character's point of view in the middle of the scene without warning. This is called head hopping and it's not good. Switching from one character's head in third person to another character's head in third person in the middle of a scene is like one of the mortal sins of writing. <laughs> it just makes the reader feel incredibly confused and detached and wondering why is it that we can see into everybody's head at the same time. Imagine you had the magical ability to hear everybody's thoughts and you couldn't turn off this magical ability so you were constantly hearing 
all the internal dialogue and thoughts of everybody constantly overlapping each other. Sounds like a headache, right? Well, that's what it feels like to read head hopping. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, wait, Abby, didn't you just describe third person omniscient? No, as I said before, you are still using the pronouns they, them, she, him, but you're narrating from the perspective of an omniscient narrator, not narrating from every character's perspective at the same time. To be truly omniscient, you have to be telling the story as this omniscient narrator character, not as any of the characters in the scene. This is your narrative. An author who does this really well is Jane Austen. She is known for her comedic and sassy omniscient narration, but she also dives really deep into the character's emotions. If you haven't read any Jane Austen, please, please go fix that problem. You can find all her books online for free and I highly recommend Sense and Sensibility and of course Pride and Prejudice. Now, once you know the rules, you can bend them a little. <laughs> for example, in the novel that I wrote for last NaNoWriMo, I used a mixture of first person, third person close, and third person omniscient. I know, you're like, what the heck, Abby? That sounds like a mess. <laughs> but I assure you, it is not. It is unique and pretty darn cool. For the first 6,000 words of the book, I told the story first person, from my MC guy's point of view. Then he meets my MC girl and I start switching between both their perspectives. Then about a third of the way into the book, I have a little third person chapter, which recounts an event that happened long before the story began. Then we go back to first person between my two protagonists and occasionally the antagonist. And I continue to sprinkle in those third person sections throughout the book. It's kind of weird but I like it. <laughs> I think it's cool to experiment with new styles, but if you do end up switching things up a lot, like I did with this novel, it's important to remember to stay in your main protagonist's head for a little while at the beginning and really establish who they are and why the reader should care about them. Like we always say on this channel, the protagonist is the yardstick by which we measure the importance of everything in the story. So if we're just like thrown into a story and suddenly we're just hopping between all these different characters, why should we care? I've started to watch and never finished so many TV shows that are like this that start and there's no real protagonist and so it just jumps around between all these different people and you're like, who are these people? I don't even care. I do not care. I do not care. And so then you lose, it loses your attention and you don't watch the show. Why? Because there was no one person that you were supposed to deem the most important that you cared about and measured everything by. That was a bunny trail, I'm sorry, but it's important. <laughs> Bottom line, cool writing styles can be intriguing, but they don't engage the reader unless you make the reader care about the characters. So first, earn the reader's trust, make them care about your main character, and then you can take them on a wild adventure with your crazy unique writing style. All right, my friend, time for you to talk to me. Comment below and tell me what point of view do you prefer to write in? I know we all have, we all have a favorite that we go back to. Remember, there is no right or wrong point of view to write from. It all depends on your story, your, your, your personality, and how many characters you're following. Smash that like button if you like this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos and publishing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Until next week, my friend, rock on. Just call on